Hey, Laura. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are it's you? It's been a minute. It has. Um, we haven't posted a long form in a little bit over a year. Uh, what uh, What have you been up to? So quite a bit. Um, I get asked a lot of questions about where and when are our long form videos gone. Um, and uh, it's a long story, but basically the way I answered it was essentially we lost our videographer. But um, that is really the short answer to it. Um, the full answer, as you know, is that um, we had several franchisees collude with one another and um, basically cease paying their franchise fees, steal our brand, our intellectual property, our clients, our proprietary information, and then go and compete. Um, and all that to avoid paying royalties, I guess. So um, this caused 14 people to lose their jobs unfortunately, and the media department, the marketing department were all part of that um, in, in the franchise system. So that is the reason why we have not had any long form videos in, gosh, I think it's been over a year now. What, um, let's kind of go back to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were, we kind of got, we hit some big numbers last year. Um, jobs were, you know, we're doing very well. And media aside, how, 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 how are you doing? You know, I'm very frustrated that uh, that wasn't the first time that had happened. Um, in franchising, it is kind of consistent with franchisees that want to uh, get into the program, learn your methods, your secrets, your proprietary stuff, and then steal it and not pay you for it, essentially. And um, that's something that many brands will look the other way on, and that's not something that I would. Um, the uh, individual that was kind of the spearhead to, to the collusion was um, attempting to get and recruit as many people as possible to uh, leave the system, leave the franchise system, in order, because he thought if, if enough people leave the system, that I and the corporate staff would not have the money or the wherewithal to be able to defend the brand and, and, and file suit against these people. What they didn't realize is that um, I have multiple businesses with you know, my multiple <laughs> streams of revenue and I learned many, many years ago to never put your eggs in one basket and this is exactly why. Uh, because anything could happen and it, it could have been you know for some people it was COVID you know it shut down yoga studios and gyms and you know things with high contact um, which you know is is an act of God and, and no one to blame there but this was absolutely targeted uh, against the system not only did they um, you know screw 14 people out of their jobs but they also hurt the remaining franchisees that were in the system because they stole resources from them. Wow. Um, how did you like? Uh, how did you get? Through, how did you get? So, kind of give me a timeline of the last year. So like yeah. Happened, so yeah. We we'll we'll kind of break down the timeline, but also like, you know, just what you were kind of went through to to get through this and where we're at today now. Yeah, so if people remember the Hurricane Ida in the fall of 2022, um, that's kind of when the, uh, that we feel that the collusion was being set up. And um, fast forward to, that was around October of 2022, fast forward to February of 2023, that's when they started trying to recruit other people and then they literally uh, almost simultaneously stopped paying royalties and um, defected from the brand, breached their contract and, uh, and whatnot. Um, they, again, the whole, they, you know, if, if you know anything about franchising, you know that the franchise contracts are extremely favored towards the franchisor, as they should be. They're giving you access to their brand, their intellectual property, they're teaching you everything you need to know. So what they didn't understand was that they thought, well, I wouldn't be able to um, protect the brand and file suit against them. They thought, oh, this will just go away. We'll continue competing and we never have to pay royalties again. 
Here we are, um, you know, a year and a half later, and we are vigorously defending the brand um, because what they did was stealing. It's theft. And uh, while it's not criminal because it's in a, in a civil proceeding, it is still um, extremely unethical. Some of them were using our name up until recently, and maybe some still are. Um, some are using our likeness, our uniforms. Uh, they ripped off our pricing. Uh, one of them even screenshot our operations manual because it, we had it protected to where you couldn't download it or print it. So he literally went through like 400 pages and screenshot each page. So to say that that wasn't intentional is, is a little laughable. So where are you at today as far as where does Spalding Decon stand today? So um, where we're at, we were at uh, 48 locations before this happened. We are at 19 now, and I have no plans to continue franchising. And um, the reason is, is, not, is not because of just this specific incident, it's the totality of it. Um, I don't believe in the franchise model on either side, the franchisor or the franchisee. I just don't think it's a good model, period. Um, we have had so many, probably 75 franchisees total that we've had, and I would say less than 10% are actually what I would call good franchisees. So the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Um, we, we felt as a corporate team too that um, we're adult babysitters and um, it's just not working. So we're, we're gonna continue to support our current franchisees, but we will not be selling any more franchises. Um, and then, so like, what does that mean like moving forward now? You know, what's, uh, you, so, Scroll, going back, like you know, you said that you know, obviously you don't put all your eggs in one basket, but it's like, what's next for Laura Spalding? You know, it's um, it's an exciting time right now because I have kind of put that in my rearview mirror, and uh, move forward. I have a real estate investment company. I own a property management company, and I'm getting ready to buy a seven-figure unknown company that I can't talk about yet. But um, this company will really complete my vertical integration with, with all my other companies. So I'm really looking forward to adding more real estate to my portfolio and not being in the adult babysitting business. Um, it's just, I wanna, I wanna be in control of my own successes and my own failures. Yeah. Uh, I'll be the first one to say that, you know, I was not a perfect franchisor, uh, but the institution of franchising is, is ex extremely flawed. And it's something that um, I don't recommend for most people. It does work for some, but it, you really have to uh, dig deep and find out why you wanted to do that. And apparently my why was flawed at the time because my whole goal when I decided this in 2015 was that, you know, I came from nothing. I was on food stamps in college and um, this business has been very, very, done very well for me. And I wanted to share that with other people that maybe didn't come from a trust fund or you know, a Ivy League school. And that was really my goal. And I catered the franchise towards those type of people. Um, but what I didn't realize, I was naive, was that the way the franchise is set up is that uh, franchisees almost look at the, as, at the franchisor as a big brother or Uncle Sam or the IRS, but that's not at all how I looked at it. I looked at it as, wow, we have a symbiotic relationship. We're, we're stronger together as a unity. And uh, when the other side does not look at things that way, then that means that it's never going to work. Yeah. So in hindsight, I should have grown with corporate stores instead of diluting my brand by franchising. Um, for people that want to kind of elaborate on that a little bit, you know, like you said, obviously you never talked about the relationship, but what's wrong with the franchise model? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's a lot wrong. So first of all, um, again, the, the, uh, from the onset, the vendors that are uh, providing services or products to franchisors, in my opinion, are very parasitic. They, um, they are, like, I'll give you an example. I remember when I first started my business in 2005, um, the guy that I learned everything from said, the best thing I can tell you is your home phone, this is back when we had home phones, is probably 30 bucks a month. I said, yeah. 
He said, the minute that you call the same phone company and ask for the same phone line as a business, it's now 60 bucks a month. So what I took from that is these vendors think, oh, you're in a business, so you're, we're gonna charge you more for it. Well, when it came to franchising, that same phone line was 200 a month. So it, it, and it's even worse, you know, they're, they're trying to sell you anything and everything and they very rarely deliver. Um, so we went through a ton of vendors and, you know, everything from clothing to um, business cards to, you know, websites and, and all that stuff. So it's a, um, you're a tiny goldfish in a giant pond of sharks. And that's really the way it felt. Um, I went to the International Franchise Association conference once and I was encouraged to join the IFA very early on. And in hindsight, that was a big mistake. I should have never been encouraged. I had zero locations at the time. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. So I'm sure that they were thinking, well, you can go there and get education. But the IFA wasn't geared towards that. It was yeah. geared towards, we're gonna throw you into the trade show with all these vendors. So I thought, okay, well, maybe I'll find some vendors. And then, um, the other brands are all gigantic brands. So th there's really no, there's no place for emerging brands in, in the IFA and it's quite expensive, it's, it's cost prohibitive. There's just so many things wrong with the dynamic of franchising that I, I really don't know why anyone would do it. Um, you know, can you start your own doing something? Absolutely you can. The benefit of franchising is that you, you jump ahead of the pack, right? You get to skip the line. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. The problem is people are willing to pay for that, but then once they have your intellectual property, it's like, fuck you, I'm out, yeah. you know? And they'll steal it, they'll lie, they'll cheat. Um, we've had so many bad actors that it's really put a bad taste in my mouth and the staff. You know, I, I don't think the staff would, um, work in a franchise system again for the most part and, the, and this is I'm, I'm assuming this is common across all franchises right? <laughs> it is and you know one of the things is when i was a brand new emerging franchise i went to a conference in atlanta and i don't remember which conference it was but i was sitting next to a lady who was an executive yeah. for a cell i'm not going to say the name but a cell phone brand um and uh that also franchises and I said to her, what do you, how do you prevent franchisee theft? And she said, you don't, you look the other way. And I looked at her and I thought, is she for real right now? And that resonates with me today because I refuse to look the other way. I refuse to pour my heart and soul and help, help these people become millionaires. And I made several people millionaires over the years um, to only have them steal from me. And the worst part of it all was hurting my staff. We had a fantastic team that really busted their ass to help everybody to only be told that they were gonna lose their jobs because these guys stole from them. You know, like I said, we had some bad actors and franchisees. We had one that um, in Texas that literally was stealing pills from customers' homes because she was an addict and an alcoholic. Um, ironically, she was part of this collusion too. Um, we've had uh, people have affairs with our coaching staff and the franchisee was married. Um, we've had uh, franchisees literally say on recorded lines, don't go through the franchise, pay me cash on the side. Um, you know, so, they may not look at that as stealing, but you're taking away from these people's salaries that are, that are being paid to make you succeed. So um, we've had them um, tell me, oh my God, I'm not making any money, but I'm making a lot of money. And I'm like, what exactly does that mean? That means that you know, I've got a million five on the books, but my net income is like negative 30 grand. And then when you start looking into the paperwork, the profit and loss and you know, everything as we're yeah. supposed to do, you find out that he's been giving his staff American Expresses with no limits. And they have been buying themselves tools. They were um, having sexual relations on jobs and buying hotels. They were um, buying, uh, taking everybody to restaurants. They were filling up, filling up gas with their, for their whole family. So, it, and this was an individual who ended up stealing from us. 
So it's like it, it come it came full circle for sure. I guess my only other question is what's what's next? Man, I am um, excited about it. So my Tampa location is doing fantastic. We had the best month in history that we've ever had here uh, this past month. And I have a uh, great general manager running it. So I, you know, again, I'm, I'm starting these businesses or I'm buying businesses and I'm putting great, fantastic people in there to run it. And I'm incentivizing them with, you know, profit sharing, of course, you know, there's no greed here at all. Um, you know, I, I want, if I do well, I want everyone to do well. This is not going to be one-sided. So I plan on doing the same with this, uh, new seven figure business that I'm, that I'm going to buy. Um, and that individual will, I already have this person picked out. So they will take over and run this business and, um, hopefully scale it to eight figures. Nice. I guess the one qu the last question, which is on everyone's mind, what is next for the videos? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Again, we lost our media team, but what we're doing now is a lot of short form type videos. We are still looking for a videographer to do long forms, but we, we come up with the struggles, of course, as you can imagine, because these people aren't filming, you know, cool hamburger and french fries videos. They're, they're actually going in places with maggots and tear gas and people's brains on the wall. It, so it takes a special person to do this, as you know. Um, so I'm gonna continue looking for that right person who has not only the ability to be in those environments, but the skill and the interest. And I think this would be you know, a perfect job or internship for someone who just doesn't wanna film the mundane, you know, the, the stupid, the boring, you know, because we, what we do is very sad, but it's very interesting. And it's in its humanity. You get to film humanity at the end. And I think uh, for me, that's a privilege.